So now we're going to demonstrate the shielding we've just been talking about. So I have Catherine here with me. Hi. And uh, it's a complicated demo, it takes two people, and has a lot of equipment involved, so let's remind you what everything is. First, there's my favorite, my Teflon rod. It's got the Teflon tape on it, and I'm charging up the Teflon tape. So the Teflon tape is nice and negative. It's got a Van de Graaff generator. So this is basically something that gets really charged up. This belt runs back and forth, picks up charge in the base, dumps it in the metal can, and it gets a very high charge. We'll throw big sparks. You've probably maybe seen people play with these uh, before. The third thing is this, and it's named after the greatest scientist that's ever lived. Catherine, who do you think is the greatest scientist that's ever lived? Probably Einstein? No. Most common answer, Einstein. Einstein was a theorist. You have to be at least half theorist, half experimentalist to be the greatest scientist that's ever lived. Guess again. Faraday? Yes. Very good. Faraday. Maybe she's heard of a Faraday cage. So Faraday was the greatest scientist that's ever lived. I don't have time to explain it right now. I'll, say, I'll recommend you a book later. But there is no question he was. So this cage is one of the many things uh, named after Faraday. And it's basically a continuous metal cage. And as we just learned, if you have a metal shell, it shields electric fields from getting inside. So what we're going to show you, so Catherine's going to take the rod and the tape. I'm going to turn the Faraday cage on. And now we have a very large uh, charge building up. And you can see it's even arcing. But the main thing to see is that the negatively charged tape doesn't want to go anywhere near the Faraday, or the, uh, the Van de Graaff generator. So there's a large electrostatic repulsion between the two. And now Catherine is going to take it and hold it near the Van de Graaff generator but inside the Faraday cage. And when she does that, you're not going to see any electrostatic repulsion. The tape just hangs there. The tape is still charged. The Van de Graaff generator is still charged, very high. But there's no repulsion because the cage is shielding the electrostatic field. Okay. Now, that's the normal way to show you that a Faraday cage works. But I want to show you how much I really believe in a Faraday cage. It's like a religious thing with me. Anything named Faraday, I have a high degree of faith in. So what we're going to do is I've got those sparks going again. And I'm going to get in the Faraday cage up here. And I'm going to put my tongue here where it's starting to spark, but it won't get me because I'm protected by the Faraday case. There we go. So I'm going to put my tongue here. See? Don't feel a thing. Put my nose, eyeball, nothing. And the reason is the Faraday cage makes all the field lines that are coming off this thing stop. They stop right on the metal surface and they can't get through. That's why I never felt anything. No electric field, no particles got past the Faraday cage. The one thing you may ask is this thing has holes in it, right? It's actually, it's not a solid metal shield. It's actually just this sort of mesh. And one reason is so you can see through it. And it still works. Nothing gets past the holes because as long as all the objects we're dealing with, this big sphere, my tongue, all these things, as long as they're big compared to the size of these holes, in terms of electrostatics, it's essentially a continuous metal film. So don't worry about the holes. They will affect other things. But for this uh, example, it doesn't matter. It's essentially a continuous metal cage. So there you have it, Faraday cage, Great name, always works.